little bit about this program. So it's Team Fatherhood University. Uh, Sean has been looking at this program because one, when you think about help for young fathers, you know, where, where, do you, where do young fathers turn to when it's time for help on these specific issues? There's not a lot of places. I mean, usually it's just your friend. But when you think about moms and where do they turn to, everywhere. There's, there's advice for a mom on every corner you go to. So thus, that's the reason Sean created this program to help young fathers like yourself. And in even older fathers like me, my kids are over 18. So, you know, when I sit into some of these uh, uh, meeting rooms with young fathers like yourself, I think about what I went through at that time. And I think about what young fathers are going through now, and I try to figure out, you know, how would I have handled the situation at the age that I am at now, and, you know, what would I do differently if I had more kids. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Georgia. Uh, I'll be here for a couple hours. Uh, I've been in your shoes before, so you can ask me any questions you want to. Um, if you, and we can talk about, I, so I work for Metro Louisville. I'm over the housing department for Metro Louisville. So, um, any questions you have about housing or how Metro can help, uh, don't hesitate to ask me those questions too. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna have you sit down, man, because I'm gonna kind of share, uh, you know, with my piece. I pulled up the website because I wanted you to know that there is a website, two not one dot org, the number two, the word not the number one dot org. And you can go to the website if you see uh, what we do, uh, the number of things we have. Uh, so the first time we have a Dads Make a Difference workshop series where we would have you start to work with their fathers and try to help that relationship between the mother and the father. Right? We have something called, uh, what this right here, Teen Father University, and we may be changing that name because uh, some of you have told me that you're a teen, that you're a teen, so you know, we may change that name. But we work with young fathers, 16 or 24, right? Then uh, we have a program, Rites of Passage, which is a young black boy that we work with them for 20 weeks um, in a setting like this and then we go on a trip, we go fishing, camping, ski shooting, and deer hunting and we're in our second year of that. We have a mother's forum. We have a mother's forum where we bring moms to the table and have a conversation with them. We let them know that we appreciate them but we also let them know that fathers matter, right? And we've been there for like eight years and when we do those mother's forums it's some of the most powerful sessions that you ever see, right? We have a conference. We didn't do our conference last year, but we're actually leaning toward doing a, a, a summit this year uh, just for young fathers, right? Uh, we got to figure out how to connect with fathers, how to connect with men, so that we can give them the tools they need to be the best fathers they can be. And for those who don't have fathers, I mean, don't, don't have kids, we want to make sure that you're not in, at risk, right? Um, and when I say at risk, it's not that having a child at an early age means that you've made a mistake, right? But I think if you haven't had a child at an early age, there's a lot of your life that you want to live right uh, before you get there. And for you, that you got one coming at the end of the world, but it just means that we have a little work to do, right? Because we want to make sure that you get what you need to be right, you know, career rise, professional, academic, so that you can be the best provider you can for your kid, right? And also be there with the mom and make that work however you can to the best of your ability. Let me see, we have, uh, oh, every year we do a picnic. Now, picnic is a, is a, is a big deal. I love the picnic. Um, and a lot of times people say, well, Sean, why don't you do the picnic on Father's Day? You shouldn't do it on Father's Day. You ought to pick another day because people do stuff on Father's Day. But a lot of this work, a lot of the work I do is based on my personal life. So for me, <clears throat> when I own my kid, you ain't got to give me no gifts. I don't need all that. I always enjoy doing things with my girls. I always enjoy doing things with my girls. So for me, it was like, man, that's a day that we can go, we can eat food and hang out with other fathers. We all playing games, uh, the, the sack race, tug of war, and all that. Let's do that. And, yeah. I'm sorry. I, when you say the picnic, I just want everybody to understand, like, the picnic says Shelby Park, right? Shelby Park. <clears throat> the park is sold out yes. for the picnic. I'm talking about the news, reporters are there, the park is sold out for this picnic. So I, I just kind of wanted to... When, I don't want people to just think a few people show up for the picnic. I'm well, talking about. Well, so somebody, do you mind clicking on you guys for me? Or, or no, if you click on, yeah. if you click on, uh, click on engage. Let's see what happens when we go to engage. Is that where it's at? This is okay. Wait, wait, wait. Go to the public. <coughs> 
it does, but it's coming, it's coming. So scroll down a little bit, see if there's any. So if you scroll, if you go to the website, you will see, just scroll, just scroll down, just scroll down. Don't click on that, just scroll down. Just kind of, yeah, there you go. So go on there, keep going. So like right here, you see, uh, oh, this is always cool right here. So the, um, we always do tug of war. The men and the boys have never won. So I always like to say that. Um, I, I don't know, maybe we ain't got no strength or something, but the women always, what it is, there's some mud in the middle. You know, women ain't messing up their clothes, they ain't messing up their hair, so I'm telling you, they just, uh, go ahead and keep scrolling, that's some more. So when you go to the website, uh, keep on scrolling, there's a clip, keep on scrolling. We also do a manhood pledge, keep scrolling, and there's another clip, keep scrolling, there's some pictures right there. Um, and sleep, let's leave, let's leave, let's yeah. So, <clears throat> just to let you know, we have a lot of people come out, we have a good time, and it's free. And it's free. Uh, but we are trying to grow it. We are trying to grow it, right? We're trying to get it to the place where uh, I talked to James. James said, well, do y'all play basketball? Basketball is at the other, the other end of the park. Mm -hmm. So our vision has always been to try to, do, to get two days. We haven't <laughs> got there yet by far. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> if we can coordinate the basketball, then I'll be, we can. But what tends to happen in June is hot. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we either get the hottest day, one of the hottest days of the summer, or we get rain. But, uh, but yeah, we would love to have the father. So, first of all, the biological father. You're the one that impregnated the lady, and, and she's pregnant with your child. Does that make you ordinarily a father, though? It, just because you're the biological. Do you get all the titles of being a father because you're the biological? No. Do you get any of the entitlements? of being a father because you're the biological. No. On all three categories, you don't get any of the entitlements of being a father just because you have that title. You, to be a true father in each one of those categories, you gotta put some skin in the game. You gotta put some skin in the game. On your biological father, your surrogate father, and your community father, you gotta be involved. And I believe that's a part of their mission statement. There it is. Wow. That's a part of their mission statement. You have to be involved to be to get the title as father in all three categories. Um, you said her, I told you I had two biologicals. My one of my biological sons was failing in middle school. Middle school is hard for you guys because everything's happening in middle school. Your hormones going off. Y'all recognizing girls for the first time and then the people are judging you by what, how you dress, how you look. You got to get your swag on. Yeah, I get that. Well, my son, he comes from a family that fell in this not an option. And so when he decided one year to fell a whole semester straight using the ops. I said, wow. So as his biological father and father, I'm talking about the whole title, what do you think I did to him for felling whole quarter? Made him take summer classes. Made him take summer classes. Anybody else got any suggestions? Read the newspaper. Read the newspaper. Anybody else? Come on, y'all fathers. You're what thinking like a father. What else what what do you think? This father did to my, his son. Took away all extra activities. Took away activities. Read, sat down, made him read. Like made, made him read. read. Uh, I didn't. I didn't do none of that. As his father, this is what I did. And I'm a police officer at the time. Okay, I'm on the force. Education is important to me. Lesson number one with a father. What's important to you is going to be important to your kids. Mm -hmm. I took off work for a whole week. I told my son, "Yo." No. I'm out. My son just failed a whole semester of school. I'm going to school with him. <laughs> I went to school with my son for an entire week. Not in my uniform as police, but as a dad. Yeah. Because I wanted my son to know, this is important to me. It's way more important than this job. It's made way more important to me. Is that you succeed. Because once you gain knowledge, nobody can take that from you. Knowledge is forever yours. You can build on that knowledge or you can let that knowledge stay right here. But it's your knowledge to keep. And that's why some of you all are just dangerous enough to be dangerous. Because you got a little knowledge, 
and you never took it any farther. And that's what two not one can offer you. The little knowledge that you already possessed as a young man, you can take it farther by adding on to that knowledge. So I went to school with him for an entire week, and I sit in class with him like this. Just listening. I was bored to death. Teacher didn't say nothing. Teacher can't say nothing. You rule that school. A lot of y'all fell in because your parents are not exercising their rights as parents. Y'all rule that school as parents. Whether your child get a good education or not, it's your responsibility, not theirs. Yep. And so after a week of going to school with my son, what do you think he said to me? Why do you keep on <laughs> He said, I got this. He said, you ain't never got to come back. And I didn't have to come back. Because <laughs> it wasn't worth the grief that he went through with his comrades by me being there tonight. Right. Because not only did he have to straighten up, but everybody else in the classroom had to straighten up. Because you had a father sitting there. That's right. They didn't know who I knew. That's right. And you could be in that father to your kids. But that's what I did for my son. I, that's how I showed I care. See, being involved is more than just issuing orders and hitting on your chest and saying, I'm the man. When it comes to your seed and your children, you've got to be involved 100%. And y'all say 100? you got to be all the way 100 because your child can tell when you're faking. Now, this, this same son of mine, he was recruited from the game. And so that means that situations or circumstances do not drive our behavior. We do. Can't nothing stop us, make us do anything. Nobody made y'all be here today, did it? I don't see no cops out there. I don't see no prison guards. You all chose to be here. Yeah, I could have watched football. Could have watched football. I started games on some good ones on. But you know, I, said, I thought, James said something about that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'm going to check it out. Right. That's what I said. <laughs> see how that? We drive our own behavior. Then we got some people that focus only on the negative. You ever met people like that? This negative. Yeah. Some people tell me the cup's always half empty. You know, there ain't never enough. Nothing. Everything is, you either, you know, you ever, you ever dated a girl that was just, just negative, 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 negative all the time, strictly about yeah. you? Yeah. Ain't nothing you can do right? You buy her something, she says, you know, I really wanted that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, that's that negative type of thinking. And, 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 and that right there, I mean, that's, that's focusing on the negative. So what that means is, is that that cup is, in that person's eyes is always half empty. But is that cup also is what? Half full. Half full. You may not have everything that you want right now, right? But you got some things you want, right? Mm -hmm. And you may have more things than somebody else. So the cup ain't never half empty. As a matter of fact, I always tell people, instead of you know crying about the cup being half empty, get you a bigger cup. And if it's half empty, guess what? You got more than, you got more than what you got in that little cup. <laughs> get a bigger cup. The next one is, I love this, fortune teller. This is predicting the worst possible outcome and making it worse. You ever had that happen? Well, give me an example where you predicted, like, you predicted this worst outcome and that drove your, your behavior. Give me an example of that. Um, like an example about the math test. You okay, say. yeah, exactly right. That's fortune telling. Yeah, you, you. That's fortune telling. You, man, you, show, man, you guys are show up today. That's fortune telling. And we do that a lot. Sometimes people do it with bills. Yeah. They'll get a big bill. And they go, man, I can't. I can't pay it. You know? Yeah. I ain't going to be able to make this payment. So what do they do? They don't pay it. Yeah. And it gets bigger. <laughs> you know, and eventually the car gets repossessed. <laughs> you know, he's that guy with black eyes. Oh, man. I left my Kevin Durant in the truck. Come <laughs> on, in my shoes, fool. <laughs> so that's fortune telling. And another one is that gets us in trouble is mind reading. Mind reading. Thinking you know what somebody's thinking. Oh, there's differences going on. <laughs> so does, does, does that make sense? Does that make sense? And somehow profound, like I said, initially everything may have worked, but when you get down to the core of what you're really dealing with, you heard that saying, if it walks like a duck, <laughs> it's probably a duck, and you're a chicken, right? Can't help you fell in love with a chicken, right? <laughs> it is what it is, but what you're going to have to do is maneuver 
and work through those differences if you still want to have a relationship. But it's not the relationships going to have some differences. It's not going to be like if you was a chicken and a chicken, right? Or a fish and a fish. So I want you to kind of just raise up. Does that make you think? I want you to think about these things as relationships. And not judging other people, but look at yourself. You want a more satisfying relationship, look and know who you are and what your temperament is. We went through the astrology thing and what we found out last week. I'm an Aries. Found out this young man, he's a Taurus. We connect on a lot of different things. We really can get some things and work well together. Talked with this gentleman, he's also Taurus. Taurus. James is an Aries, an Aries, and we talked about that because Tauruses have some differences with Aries, but when he talked to me and kind of understand, because I have evolved and really looking at who I am, I have adjusted to some things. What's yours? You know your birth sign? Aquarius. You're Aquarius. My daughter's an Aquarius. She's an air sign. Aries, we're fire sign. We like air. But do we not have trouble with water signs? Pisces? I have a Pisces sister. We clash all the time. I got a Pisces sister. Okay. But I'm Aquarius like him. So but you know. Aquarius, I find y'all usually have a balance. And think about it, you got air and their water. Not a whole lot of threat. I look at those, whether my own theory and stuff, but I see how it works. Now what's your sign? Taurus. Another Taurus in the room. <laughs> And, and see, Tauruses are the bulls. They go at it. But I'm a ram. But the ram will lock horns with a Taurus, but we still mean about the same when it gets down to our beliefs and stuff. Now, what were you? Gemini. My son's a Gemini, my ex husband's a Gemini. We work real great together because you're an air sign. But still, you have those differences. And because, like in some situations, where you just won't move, you won't change uh, to accommodate, and we didn't negotiate it. And sometimes negotiation, and the reason I like sit at the table because all what y'all gonna be doing and getting some negotiations here, we didn't negotiate it. We did negotiate it, but sometimes the reality is the negotiation, and it's your right to walk away from the table. You can agree to disagree, but that should have nothing to do with your co-parenting. That's just between us. But the reality is, when you have children, remember. The first thing you learned about. The most important thing I learned that there's people here to help me, and I should always stick by my child, even if, even if the mother doesn't agree or someone tells me different. You think two not one King uh, Fatherhood workshop is going to help you in the future? Yes. I, yes, it was a very good program. I think lots more people should know about it and should come, should come support, should come for support.